Update Focus, our weekly talk TV program for the ACT, as well as Southern and Central New South Wales. Hello, it's Guy Sweeting. Today, should Defence have a licence to kill pest kangaroos in Canberra? Also, the military man joining Labor ranks to try to topple Gary Nan in Eden Monero. Then, Grenfell's biggest weekend of the year. And an AFL legend training kids today in Canberra. But first up, do you have your pets microchipped? Well, in Wollongong, there's research into the benefits of microchipping humans. To explain why, we're joined in our Illawarra studio by Dr. Katina Michael from Wollongong University. Welcome to State Focus. Hi Guy, how are you? Very well, thank you. Why do we need to microchip humans? Well, there are a variety of reasons why people are looking into microchipping humans and at the moment the biggest... Right, as far as Alzheimer's go, I guess that would be uh, a good thing for people concerned about the whereabouts of uh, relatives uh, who have problems. Definitely. In fact, um, in the United States, we have thousands of individuals, uh, and many of them are sufferers of different types of illnesses, such as uh, Alzheimer's disease, dementia, uh, schizophrenia, even Hodgkin's disease. And these individuals are hoping that uh, their carers can locate them faster, and emergency services can locate them faster if they become uh, unconscious or incapacitated and don't know where they are. There's been a lot of talk over the years about mobile phones, holding them up to your ear and the yes. uh, radiation risk. If we had a little chip actually put into ourselves, what, what kind of a radiation risk is that? Uh, at the moment, the Food and Drug Administration has actually passed microchip implants in the United States to be within the body and beneath the skin. And uh, they are not really concerned about the health risks posed by implants, but there are different perspectives held by different academics. Come out, that's come out of the University of South Australia actually shows uh, there may be health problems related to microchip implants in the future, but that's yet to be, uh, you know, definitely shown. Would microchips in humans be the same as microchips in pets, the same ones? They're exactly the same technology, and the only novel application is that they are in humans, not uh, pets. In fact, back in 2002, there was an individual in Canada who decided to microchip himself and register himself on a pet database. Uh, just to show that the technology was exactly the same. Okay, now um, there's microchips in passports and credit cards and things like that. Is it the same as that? Exactly the same technology and uh, the only difference is whether you uh, opt for a passive implant or an active implant and that is the passive implant doesn't have any real onboard intelligence and the active implant actually has some battery power on it. Um, but yes, we are talking about exactly the same technology that's been rolled out in the e-passports. About the Wollongong research into microchips. Microchipping is, uh, I think, originally in America, as you alluded to earlier. But, but what aspect of that research is being conducted in Wollongong? Okay, well, with regards to microchip implants, it is a global phenomenon. And we do have uh, implantees now coming up all over the world, uh, mostly in North and South America but also in Europe now we have people that are hobbyists that want to implant themselves. And at Wollongong University in the School of Information Systems and Technology, we are really looking at the social implications of that technology. Okay, and in Wollongong specifically, are there going to be a lot of people walking around Wollongong with microchips in them because you're investigating and, and researching this in Wollongong? Um, there may be in the future, uh, but at the moment I'm hoping that we are really you know, ironing out all those particular risks and benefits uh, to society at large and looking at potential niche applications but really we are concerned more about the implications of the technology and those uh, consequences may be in the future uh, but at the moment I'm hoping that we are really you know ironing out all those particular risks and benefits uh, to society at large and looking at potential niche applications but really we are concerned more about the implications of the technology and those uh, consequences that we're not really waiting for to happen once the technology is really widely rolled out all over the world. All right, fascinating stuff. We'll see where that develops. Thanks for coming in today. Thank you. Thanks, Guy. Thank you. Dr. Katina Michael from Wollongong University joining us in our Illawarra studio. Could it be the